So now that you understand why breads, cakes, and baked goods will collapse and dry out at higher altitudes, let's talk about adjusting ingredients for high altitude baking. So again, keeping in mind that all of this is driven, all of our issues with high altitude cooking and baking, all of it is driven by atmospheric pressure and its effect on the lowering of a boiling point, the, uh, the lowering of the temperature at which water turns into steam. We can adjust our ingredients to up or down to compensate for this and still be able to bake great cakes, great breads, and do great cooking at altitude. So the first ingredient that I wanna to talk to you about is your liquid. So again, your liquid will evaporate into steam and out into atmosphere and out of your cake or out of your baked goods faster at altitude. So it just goes to, sh you know, it's very logical that you're just gonna need more liquid in your cakes. Well, how much more liquid? Well, starting at about the 3,000 foot elevation, you wanna add about one to two tablespoons per cake or you know, single use recipes. For most of the recipes that are formulated for the home cook, uh, this will work for. If you're, in a, if you're a professional chef, we'll talk about percentage here in a second. But at the 3,000 foot level elevation, you wanna add about one to two tablespoons of water to your recipe. Now for the professional baker, that's uh, working at altitude and who's working off of the baker's percentage. And we have a separate video on that that I'll link to in the show notes if you're not familiar with the baker's percentage. But for the professional bakers out there, this basically equates to about 3% additional water at altitude. And remember, this is not a magic pill. It's a starting point. We understand the science behind atmospheric pressure. We know if we're going to bake something at altitude, we need to add more liquid. This is a good jumping off point. You may need to adjust that ratio up and down depending upon each recipe that you create. Now for every thousand foot increase above 3000 feet, you're gonna to wanna to add one tablespoon of water for every thousand feet that you climb above 3000 or about 1%. So if you're baking at 6,000 foot elevation, you have your baseline of about two tablespoons. Another three tablespoons is gonna give you five tablespoons of additional water at 6,000 feet, or about 6% hydration higher. Now again, those are just starting places. You may need to use a little bit less liquid, you may need to use a little bit more, depending on the formulation. Because another thing that can actually affect uh, the texture of your cake and affect the water in your cake or your baked goods in general is sugar. And this happens for a couple of reasons, mainly because sugar loves to bind to water. So again, you have less water already because it's evaporating off faster at altitude. And then you have the sugar binding to the water that's left. And this will actually, the sugar will bind to the water, drying out your baked goods more. But also too, too much sugar disproportionate to the rest of the ingredients, especially the flour in your cake or in your baked goods can weaken the gluten structure of that cake. So you wanna drop your sugar percentage about one tablespoon for every cup of sugar, or about 6.25% by the baker's percentage. So again, the sugar decreases at altitude and the liquid you want to increase at altitude. Now we touched briefly on chemical leaveners and that chemical leaveners will rise cakes more easily at altitude. And when I say chemical leaveners, I'm referring to things mainly uh, like baking soda and baking powder. Yeast can kind of be thrown in this category, but we're gonna talk about yeast here in a second because technically it's not a chemical, it's a, a living microbe. Uh, but chem chemical leaveners will be more active or more effective at altitude. So you wanna decrease your chemical leaveners. And the decrease is only by one eighth at 3,500 foot elevation, but one half in the 6,000 foot elevation range. And if you're ballsy enough to try and bake cakes above 6,500 elevation, you're gonna have to decrease your chemical leaveners by as much as three quarters. And again, this happens because you have less atmospheric pressure pressing down on the cake. So as those leaveners activate, they have less force pressing down them to fight against rising that cake. And what's gonna happen is your cake is gonna rise past its point of structural integrity before the gel or before the, the starch granules in your flour form that gel and set that cake, which brings me to that, my next point, which is oven temperature, which you wanna increase at altitude. And this is pretty much universal, about 15 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit 
Uh, so if you're in the 3,000 foot range, you're going to want to go with the 15 degrees. If you're in the 6,000 foot range, you're going to want to go with the 25 degrees. Now again, what that does is it raises the internal temperature of the cake at a faster rate. You have the cake rising at a faster rate, but you've also dropped your chemical leaveners to slow down that rise. And so you're, you're trying to hit that sweet spot to when that cake hits its maximum rise point that's hot enough internally to gel all the way through and set the cake to keep it from falling back in on itself. Now these four tweaks right here, if you try these first, are going to really, with a little bit of patience and a little bit of uh, you know playing around with how much you tweak each thing, are going to really solve about 95% of your problems out there. Now, two of the things to be conscious about is you have uh, structural issues with cakes. Again, they collapse because they overrise. So to add more structure to cakes and baked goods at altitude, you can do two things. You can add more flour, about one tablespoon at the 3,000 foot mark, and another tablespoon for every 15,000 feet after that. And the flour will give you more structure, but it'll also kind of throw off the rest of these elements as well. So you might have to go back and readjust. Uh, so if the first four suggestions aren't working for you, then try uh, the additional flour trick and kind of see how that affects the overall structure. See if that can stop your cake from collapsing. And then you can also just simply add one egg to every cake recipe and the proteins and the eggs are going to uh, coagulate and give the cake a little more structure, a little more setting power. So again, just to recap and really drive this point home, all of the issues that you have with baking at altitude has all to do with atmospheric pressure and how water evaporates at a much lower temperature, which means you want to add more liquid to keep your baked goods from drying out. You want to decrease your sugar because sugar binds water and it also will weaken the structure of your cake, of your gluten itself. Chemical leaveners you want to decrease because they rise more powerfully at altitude. And oven temp you want to increase. If that's still not working for you, this will right here really improve a lot of your issues. But if it's still not working for you, try increasing the flour just by a little bit and add an additional egg. Now this, we more focused on cakes because, or cake based items, because those are the more tricky things to cook at altitude. Uh, and this will hold true for cookies, brownies, anything in that sort of cakey style of, uh, of, of baking. Now for lean dough breads, meaning your baguettes, your artisan loaves, uh, you really don't have all that much of a problem with them at altitude. The one thing you might wanna look at doing if you're having issues with your bread, is just simply decrease yeast by 25% because again, everything rises faster at altitude. Uh, bread is also included in that. So by decreasing the yeast, you're gonna slow down that fermentation. You can also play around with slowing down the fermentation by temperature. So the colder the room is, the slower that yeast will grow and the slower your bread will rise. So you can cover your bread and place it in your refrigerator to slow down that rise. Now also too, at high altitudes, the air tends to be really, really dry. So a little trick at sea level of just draping a cloth over your bread isn't going to work. It's going to still dry out too quickly. It's gonna dry out the exterior of your bread. So it's not going to rise properly. So you wanna make sure that you're laying plastic wrap over your bread uh, to really hold in any moisture. And you can also look at increasing your moisture content of any given bread dough recipe by about 5%. And that's gonna give you a good buffer zone. But most of the breads that, that we bake on Stella Culinary are in the 65 to 75% hydration ratio rate, uh, meaning that it's not really going to, there's enough moisture to where you're not really gonna have issues with it uh, at altitude. So I hope this answered most of your questions on high altitude cooking and specifically high altitude baking. And uh, sorry to those book publishers out there who make great livings off of selling uh, high altitude cookbooks. But now that you know the science behind the food, you can figure all this stuff out for yourself. If you want to have your question answered in this sort of format where you want to talk about the hows and whys behind cooking, go ahead and shoot me an email, jacob at stellaculinary.com. I'll look at your question and we might just make a video out of it.